At 5 foot 9, 180 pounds, Joe Delaney did not have the classic physique of a pro running back. But in 1981, he blazed his way to AFC Rookie of the Year honors by combining sprinter speed with a huge heart that burned with desire. He gave everything he had. He played every down like it was his last down. Uh, he would run the ball and he wasn't a big guy and he would run the ball right up into a 250, 280 pound lineman and uh, he wouldn't think twice about it, you know, and he did that week in and week out. In addition to his Rookie of the Year award, Joe Delaney rushed for over 1,100 yards and earned a Pro Bowl berth in his very first season. But what meant more to Joe Delaney, more than the accolades and the money that came with it, were his ties to the people of his hometown of Houghton, Louisiana. Houghton is a small, quiet community stuck in the rural backwoods of northwest Louisiana. It was here where Joe Delaney was raised. It was where he married Carolyn, his childhood sweetheart. It was where his three daughters were born. He was really a homebody, and he never forgot Houghton. Uh, every minute he had a chance, he'd come back to Houghton. In the offseason, the Kansas City chief running back liked nothing better than a cruise around the southwest corner of town where the Delaney clan was particularly strong. The home folks always knew when Joe was in town, mainly because of his car, which defied description. And it had everything you could imagine. There was a TV set in the front, little TV set. There were fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror. Uh, on the back of the car, I still, I'll never forget this, uh, were uh, two light poles, two clear plastic poles with Christmas lights in them. And when you turn on the car lights, these lit up. And uh, when, you, uh, when the car went down the highway, these things would go like this back and forth. It was like a Christmas tree. It was uh, kind of incredible, you know, when you think of it. It's not like something that, you know, the average guy would drive around in, but uh, Joe wasn't the average guy. He would often get a carload of kids in the neighborhood and he was take them, you know, like they would have softball games in the summertime at the school or at different schools in ball field and he would take them to the games and things and bring them back home and they all get together and you know go to the store and get chips and pops and things and he'll bring them over to the house and they'd get out there and he played play music for them or play his guitar and they just would have a good time. Kids were important to Joe Delaney and it was his hope that his fame and status could provide them with much more than just potato chips and soda. He said that um, one day when he retired wouldn't be able to play football no more. He would like to come back to Horton and build a big recreation center with pools and things for the kids that in his neighborhood so they could get a chance to do the things that he couldn't do when he was growing up in his neighborhood. Joe Delaney never got that chance. On June 29, 1983, Delaney was playing softball with friends at this public park in Monroe, Louisiana when he heard the anguished cries of three young boys who had waded into a shallow but muddy nearby pond. Although he could not swim, Joe Delaney reacted in a fashion consistent with his nature. There's a deep section there that they didn't know about. It was about six foot deep, and the three of them went under at this time. And uh, two of them didn't come up, but the third one did come up. He ran to the bank and yelled for help. As he yelled for help, there was a large crowd of people in the park that day, and Joe Delaney was one of them. And as he heard uh, the young child yell for help, well, he came running, and when he found out there were two boys who had just gone under the water here, well, he jumped in the water in an attempt to save them, and uh, he didn't come up either. Although it was a real shock uh, when I found out exactly how it happened, it wasn't surprising. I mean, he. He really, really cared about people. He was a, a team player. He cared about his teammates. Uh, and I, I could just see him. Those, those children were in need, and, and he went to help them. Uh, maybe it's easier to accept it because of the way he died. But uh, it's just too soon. Just, 
just too soon. The, you know, the good, uh, what's the song? Only the good die young. Well, thankfully that's not true across the board, but that was a good man who died way, way before he should have been because he had a lot left in him as a player and uh, certainly a lot more as a person. They held Joe Delaney's funeral in the Houghton High School gym. It was the only place in town big enough to hold an overflowing crowd of loved ones and friends. That included, among others, then Kansas City Chiefs head coach John McAvick. Joe was a living hero, and I think you who are here today have known that for many, many years. Joe now is still a hero and always will be. We will miss Joe Delaney. We will never forget him. The thing about Joe, man, he just, you know, he didn't try to be anything more than what he was. You know, he was, he just be, he was himself. He was a football player. And he was good people, man, you know. I think a lot of people appreciate him because of that. I feel that he's still a part of me and he's still here for me every day, you know, with the kids and things. They, I don't have any problem out of them or anything, you know, and it's just, I feel like he's just still here, a part of us. By strict definition, a hero is a person of great strength, nobility, and courage. Such a person was Joe Delaney.